Hello and welcome to a session of time and work. Time and work, here is an application of ratio and proportion. We use ratios extensively throughout our practice of time and work. Now what is time and work? Time and corresponding work done in the time. So it will be all about productivity, how much work can someone do in a specific time or day or maybe longer duration. Efficiency, how efficient a person is. So there might be two people with different efficiencies, different kind of work done in the same amount of time. Comparison, this is how we say X is more efficient than the other or maybe across categories. Now there is a men category and a women category and a children category. How exactly the different categories behave. Estimation, based on past data or based on the quality. Now men can do a certain work in X number of days, women will take slightly more. So if they both combine, how do we estimate that the work done it will take how much time? Time and work can be solved using two different methods. One is known as the ratio method, the other is known as the unitary method. We shall use both of them exhaustively while we do our practice exercises. Let's first of all understand the formula that goes inside the ratio method. Now let's say if M1 person can do W1 work in D1 days and M2 is a person can do W2 work in D2 days, then the relationship can be expressed as M1 into D1 into W2 is equal to M2 into D2 into W1. In other words, M1 into D1 divided by W1 should be equal to M2 into D2 divided by W2. Let's see how we apply it. If A can do a job in 12 days and B can do it in 15 days, how many days will both A and B together take to finish the same work? Now A can do a job in 12 days. So in one day, how much job can he do? 1 by 12th. Similarly, B will take 1 by 15th in a day. So together in a day, how much work will they do? 1 by 12 upon 1 by 15. Now adding, we get 9 upon 60. So 9 upon 60th of a work is done in a day. Now this can be also written as 3 upon 20. So in how, in how many days will it finish? So if we inverse it, we will say days to complete the work, which is nothing but 20 upon 3. Now let's see how it happens. Work per day, day per work. Now work we assume to be 1. Otherwise we cannot quantify that work. So in most of the examples that we take where work is not quantified, we will assume work to be 1. Then only we are able to proceed in order to complete the question. Let's see another one. A, B and C each of them working alone can complete a job in 6, 8 and 12 days respectively. If all three of them work together to complete the job and earn rupees 2340, what will be C's share in the entire earnings? Now A, B and C 6, 8 and 12. If I want to say how much work is done in a day by them, so A will take 1 by 6, 1 by 6 of the work is done in a day, B 1 by 8 and C 1 by 12. So the ratio will be what? 1 by 6 is to 1 by 8 is to 1 by 12. That is a quantum of work that are completing in a day. Now base is the same ratio, they should get their earnings. So let's put them into numerators now. So let's take their LCM. So LCM was 24. So 24 upon 6, 24 upon 8 and 24 upon 12. That becomes 4 is to 3 is to 2. So that's their relative efficiencies. 4 is to 3 is to 2. So C will get how much? 2 out of what? The total which is 9. So 2 out of 9 is what C will get, which is nothing but 520 rupees. Let's see another one. Two workers A and B manufacture a batch of identical parts. A worked for 2 hours and B worked for 5 hours and they did half the job. Now 2 hours of A and 5 hours of B, half the job is complete. Then they worked together for another 3 hours and they had to do 1 20th of the job which means that for another 3 hours they worked on it and they still had to do 1 20th of the job. How much time does B take to complete the job if he worked alone? Now 2 hours of A and 5 hours of B means half the job. So 3 hours of both of them combined will be what? Let's assume that A completes the job in A days or A hours and B completes the job in B hours. So in 2 hours, 2 upon B of the work is done plus in 5 hours, 5 upon B of the work is done is equal to half. So 2 upon A plus 5 upon B is equal to half. Similarly for the second part, 
3 upon a plus 3 upon b is equal to what? 9 upon 20. Why 9 upon 20? Because half the work was done earlier. 1 20th is still left. So what is left? 9 upon 20. 10 upon 20 was left after the initial part. So 1 by 20 is left. So 1, 10 by 20 minus 1 by 20 gives us 9 upon 20. Solving both of them, we get B takes 15 hours to close the job. Let's have a look at another one. Ram starts his working on his job and works for 12 hours and completes 40% of the entire work. To help him to complete the work, he employs Ravi as well and together they work for 12 days and get the work completed. How efficient is Ram compared to Ravi? Now Ram alone was working for 12 days, he completed 40% of the job. And he, he and Ravi together worked for another 12 days to complete the job. So at the end of the 12th day, how much work was left? 40% was complete, so 60% was left. Now Ram, we here assume one thing very clearly, that their efficiencies do not change. So Ram was working for the first 12 days, 40% was done. So next 12 days, again he will be done doing 40% of the work. So what is left for Ravi? 40 and 40, 80. So Ravi is left with only 20%. So Ravi did only 20% of the work in the balance 12 days, where Ram did 40%. So the ratio is what? 40 is to 20, which is nothing but 2 times. So Ram is twice as efficient as Ravi. Let's have a look at another one now. If 20 men or 24 women or 40 boys can do a job in 12 days, working for 8 hours a day. Now what does this mean? 20 men into 12 into 8. That is the total time taken in terms of man hours. 24 women into 12 into 8. That is the total women hours taken to complete the job. 40 into 12 into 8 is total boy hours time taken to complete the job. Now let's understand the question further. How many men working with 6 women and 2 boys take to do a job 4 times as big as the previous one for 5 hours a day for 12 days? So we know that the number of women who are going to work on this which is 6, 2 boys but they will work on different timings 5 hours now and they will work in all for 12 days to complete the job. How does it happen? Let's bring them down to single units. Six women, two boys will become too complicated. So let's bring them down to men. So let's go to the previous one. 20 men equal to 24 women. So six women equal to how much? Five men. So six women is equal to five men. Now 20 men is equal to 40 boys. So one man is equal to two boy. So two boys here will be one man. So in all how many? Five men, five men and one man. So that's total of six. Now five hours a day for 12 days. Let's look at how much man hours are required. 20 into 12 into 8. Now 20 into 12 into 8 was the earlier one. The new job is 4 times as big. So the total will be 20 into 12 into 8 into 4. Now let's say how many man hours are required. For that we need to divide the hours. So 5 hours into 12. So 20 into 12 into 8 into 4 divided by 5 into 12. If we see, we get the answer is 128 men will be required. Now 128 men, out of which how many do you have? We already have 5 from the women count and 1 from the boy count. So 6 are out. So we need 122 more men to work for the same time period in order to complete a job which is 4 times as big as the last one. This is how we use different ways in which we can solve time and work problems. Let's try more in the next one to come.